Well, here we are again for another week of garage time. This week, we're gonna continue the transformation on my Porsche 911 and work on the hood. Garage time. I've just quickly mocked up the uh, the grills and the, the bumper and uh, really to illustrate the point that this section of the hood is missing. So the hood needs to extend all the way down to this bumper. There is I also want to point out that this latch mechanism and this hood is still from the, the short hood 1974 version. So I'm going to leave this latch plate as it is. The more difficult conversion and the better conversion is to swap out the entire hood with the long hood and also swap out this whole front section to the previous 1973 year. That's a lot more work and it is a lot more expensive to go that route. One of the reasons for taking the shortcut on this long hood conversion is because this is where there's a, a location for a center oil cooler. Because this is gonna have a much bigger engine than anything from 1973 was um, envisioning, I would probably have to cut that new latch panel anyways to accommodate the oil cooler that goes here. This is really a car meant to be fun to, to drive, and it's gonna drive the same, whether it has the original latch panel or not. Okay, so now you're probably saying, where did this come from? I made this piece. I'm gonna explain how I did it. I got some pictures of how I did it. But to start with, uh, this, is, this is just a single you know, piece of sheet metal. It has the compound curve uh, formed into it. I started measuring uh, an actual long hood. So in this case, because it is an outer body panel, I took some templates off of an original long hood. So these curves were taken uh, in three places, both uh, right, center, and left. I also took the curvature from the, from the front looking down. So, so, this, so this line here is an, from, traced from an actual long hood. I made a hammer form uh, out of wood and I just beat it into the right shape. Um, and then it was smoothed out with an English wheel. So that is the short story of how this part got made. Uh, there's a lot of steps that are missing and I'm sorry they're not in video format, but I'm gonna do the best I can to explain how I made the parts. And if you're interested more in the computer aspects of it, I can share that part too. But I'm gonna show you now the um, hammer form. Okay, here is the back side of that panel that I just showed you. And if you, if you look carefully, I mean, you can see a ton of, of hammer marks uh, from the nylon hammer, which I'll show you in a second. So if I take this apart, if I take this off, you can see the, you can see the shape of the wood right here. This is the, uh, the front of the car. This is, this is the front of the car, this is the back. So that template I showed you earlier has the curvatures left, right, and center. So you can tell from here, this is the curve on one end. I machined this wood, which is just MDF, out of flat sheet. So all this material was just removed. And we only need a small section, you know, about three inches up here in the front but I, I needed to attach the flat sheet to something, so I made this a little deeper. Um, I screwed, you can see some holes here, I screwed the sheet metal down into here, three places, and I just began to, uh, to beat on it. This is the hammer that I used. So that's how I did it. It's uh, once again, I, I'm an I'm an amateur. Um, I happen to be able to operate a CNC machine. So for me, this was the easiest path. There's a hundred different ways to shape sheet metal. Uh, this is just what worked for me. This is the underside of the hood. So this is the top side. This is the underside, and this is where the skin is folded over this flange right here. And so um, this has been unfolded so we can weld to the new i mean this original skin and then this latch panel from the inside this is where the latch goes this portion 
uh, will have an, an inner skin and an outer skin. So what I just showed you was the shape of the outer skin, which is the most important for the kind of the appearance. Here's a view of the top of the hood, just showing that uh, hem that has been opened up all the way along. The reason why we didn't just cut it off, um, this makes the welding easier. So now there's something that protrudes out so we can have a weld here and then we can have another weld on the inside when we have to extend the inner skin. So this gives an offset. All right, so now it's time to start trimming this panel to fit the hood. We're gonna trust the shape of these grills and the template to get the length of the hood correct. I've just quickly uh, clamped it in place and it's already starting to have a really nice fit. I've lowered the hood down a bit. Uh, it, it won't go all the way down because I have to clamp that in place, but this is, you know, somewhat movable because it's so thin. You can see that it's roughly in the same position here. I think I got it in a really good position. Um, not gonna trim it yet, but in the center, it's, uh, it's, it's really nice, really good. There's, there's really no gap in here, which is, which is great. That means the welding will be pretty easy. Once this is welded, we'll do the final marking on the bottom and then hem that once the internal panel's in place. So right now we're really mostly concerned with the cut up at the top but before we cut the top, we wanna to make sure we have enough room on the bottom for future um, bends. And then on the ends, the ends also get wrapped inside. It's in a good place, but do I really wanna cut it? Uh, I think we should just cut it. I mean, it's only metal. So I'm just going to mark the uh, die cam with uh, a scribe so we can take it off and trim it. It may be hard to see the scribe line, but there is a line that sort of reflects all the way across. So that's where uh, we need to cut it. So there's a lot of material to re remove here. I'm, I think I'm just gonna do a, a quick cut with my plasma cutter and then trim it with the snips uh, as a final trim. All right, I just did something really dumb. Uh, so I got excited to get the rough cut done on the, the plasma cutter, which is an awesome tool, works really fast, but I cut, um, initially I cut on the wrong side of the line. If you look on, on this side, you know, here's, here's the line, and I needed to cut on this side, which I did the second time, but right as I was cutting, I started remembering that, oops, it's the wrong side. So. Um, this is where the material folds over. Um, I don't know if this is a problem or not yet, but the worst case, I have to just weld a little, a little, um, weld that back together. But really, really stupid, and good thing I didn't just cut all the way down, but. So the final trim is done. I like to use the, the snips because it's a cleaner cut. Uh, the abrasives that grinding discs uh, would put in the metal just makes it dip more difficult to weld. And you know those impurities in the metal uh, leave a brittle weld, something that's hard to work in the end. So I, I really like to only use shears on uh, welded edges. Uh, it's just kind of personal preference. All right, we're back here at the car and just checking the initial fit. With the TIG welder, the, the tighter the better. 
Um, this can be almost fused together without much filler at all. So for the purposes of getting this thing tack welded in place, I have uh, a clamp on the right, a clamp on the left, and then I have, you know, this, this kind of jack arrangement to kind of get the, the middle level. So we want to tack in the, in the middle and then move out towards the sides. So we're going to make sure it's flush as we go, um, get a few tacks in only at the places where it's nice and flush. And then we'll just, we'll just keep tacking it, you know, all the way across the width. Okay, here's the big moment where we start welding this long hood together. Here we are uh, with the section tacked in place. Uh, it's now tacked in place every couple inches. These are a little bit longer than tacks. These are almost half inch long. But you can see that the gap is, is very, very tight uh, all the way along. It's been hammered as I go to keep this gap sort of consistent. And the shape is, is looking really nice. So without any sort of force on this, this is fitting uh, really well. That clamp's kind of in the way. Uh, and then here along the, here along the center, once again, it's really uh, nice shape. And then over here towards this end, also in, in great position. So the hardest part is, is really done. I have good access to the back with a dolly. So any distortion that creeps up can hammer it out with the dolly. This is a nice view just showing the, how the edge is, is coming along. Really getting an idea of the, of the curved shape. Um, it's a little bit more difficult than just rolling the metal down. Okay, so in order to roll this edge over uh, like it's done here on the side, what I need to do is back it up from the back side and hammer it over. But to do that, I need a, a very precise dolly to go in the back. Okay, to carry this line all the way down across the front, I'm just going to use some uh, two-inch tape. I lowered the hood to get an idea how close this is to the grill. I'm going to take a width measurement with the hood open and closed to make sure that these lines are in the right place. This is a bottom view. I'm, I'm laying here on the ground looking underneath the hood in the alignment with the gap to the grill. And it's a good thing I cut the window here because the gap is way too big. This new line needs to be, looking from the front, needs to be about here. I'm going to use this to create a new hammer buck to go on the back side of this. And now I'm going to take this eighth inch hammer buck and just tack it in place so it's in the correct location so that when I hammer on it, I, it doesn't just come loose. Here's a close-up of, of, of the hammering I just did. Uh, it's still really rough, and as I expected, you know, this is rippled here because this material needs to shrink in order for it to maintain this shape. So it's wrinkled, and, and that's okay. Um, once it goes over the, over the full amount, 180 degrees, um, that'll then stretch back out again, and those wrinkles will go away. And now it's time to remove the hammering buck so I can finish it off the rest of the 180 degrees.
before I smash this all the way underneath, use this as a spacer. So with the hood closed, you can see the gap is okay. It's sticking out a little bit proud on the bottom. When I put some force on it, it closes up a little bit better. That's about as close as I can get at the time at this time um, because this is is not connected and it's, it's pretty floppy right there. And then all this extra metal here on the bottom is really putting a lot of tension on this. Now it's time to work on on the other side. I just made this little patch panel to go in this section here that was, was missing. You know, this probably could have been avoided when I trimmed this piece. I probably could have shaped it this way. I just welded this piece in and I'm and now that it's uh, fully welded I'm going to roll this edge over Here's a quick look at that hemmed over edge down here from the bottom. So now is a good time to do that same uh, half moon patch on this side. Give it some more rigidity so I can work this uh, fit a little bit better. I almost always give it a, uh, a radius. Rather than just doing a square corner there, I always like to weld on a, on a curve or a radius. Now I've moved my, my leveling rig up to the front where the fenders are, and I'm, I'm off just a little bit. These fenders are, are loose. There's just a couple bolts in there, and there is some movement in the way the fenders attach. So I wanna to try to get that number as close to zero as I can so that when I trim this horizontal line, it's also level with not only the fenders, but level with the, uh, the chassis as close as I can get it. Okay, I just spent a couple minutes adjusting the fender heights and it seems to have helped. I got I got the uh, level to zero out, both in the bubble and on the electronic scale. This fender was raised up a little bit, so now I have to adjust the hood up a little bit because this is not level here anymore. This side didn't move that much. It's still pretty flat. Okay, so this is off by 0.65 degrees. It's leaning down to the, to the right, I believe.
Yeah, so I just need to raise this side up just a little bit. There we go, triple zero, which means we now have a parallel bumper, at least parallel to the chassis. Okay, I'm doing one more final check. I'm going a little manic on this uh, bend, probably procrastinating having to fold that over, but I have a laser here. I'm just gonna try to line up. The black line is really flat here to the laser. And then right as it touches the grills is where it will bend. The time has come to finally bend this last flange. So I'm bending this last because I really wanted to get this fit first, <clears throat> measure it against the bumper and make sure that it was even along the bottom. Now I did spend some time um, making this tool specifically to bend this. So since I can't fit this in my bead roller, I thought I would use these uh, vice grips. And so I just welded on some, some really big jaws to the, to the end of, these, of, this, of this vice grip. So the edges are a little bit rolled and it's about, I don't know, inch and a half wide, almost two inches wide. So same idea as the pliers, just hopefully get a smoother bend over a larger distance. Here's a top view showing the position of the hood relative to the bumper. I think there's one section here which is a little bit flat. This probably needs to get pulled out a little bit. So that's all the time we have for today. And I'm really happy with the outcome of the whole transformation of the front of this car. It went from a short hood with original parts to a long hood in a very low amount of money. So I will, in the next episode, I will tally up the cost, including the parts on this complete conversion.